We're going to answer a few more emails today, and first up out of the box is Lou from Montrose. says he has a Dell Dimension 3000 desktop, and the fan is extremely noisy. He wants to know if he gets a new replacement fan. Will it help? Absolutely. Fans are not too bad to, to change. If you're not comfortable getting inside your computer, go ahead and take it into a computer shop and have them do it. Very inexpensive and quick fix. If you spend a little extra money on a higher-end fan, you're going to get even quieter performance. So uh, give that a shot, and good luck, Lou, with a quieter computer. And then Henrik writes that, is it possible that Google the Great has an email system that cannot sort the contact list alphabetically or any other way? And is it possible that their instructions for importing a Thunderbird contact list do not work? Are there any other downsides to Gmail? It's tough with these switch problems. Gmail is completely different. you got to look at Gmail completely different than any other email system. It does take some getting used to. I played with it for two or three years before I finally leapt into it. And you can sort your contacts by last name if you put them in that way. But the power of Google in not only their email and in their contact list is not the fact that you can do so much sorting, which is a kind of an old-fashioned way of looking at your stuff. It's because of their search capabilities that makes it so powerful. So what you just do is type a couple characters in the contact list and they come up faster than you can sort it and then look through the list. So don't get caught up in the fact that you can't do some of the things you could in other systems. Gmail is far superior, in my opinion, than any other email system that's out there. As far as exporting your list from Thunderbird, if you export the list as a contact or comma separated value and then look at the list maybe in Excel or your Microsoft Works or whatever you're using spreadsheet and make sure that everything is lined up in columns the way that Gmail wants it then you can import those in there. I do have to admit that the contact importing with Gmail could be a lot stronger and support more options but if you play with it enough you will get it and stick with Gmail I think you're gonna find the advantages far outweigh the learning curve that you're going to have to go through with it on. Next message is from Marion. She's writing that she wants to uninstall Adobe Reader and use the Foxit Reader that I've been talking about the last uh, probably six, eight months since I found it. And Adobe Reader to uninstall it, go to Start, Control Panel, your Add and Remove Programs. If you're using Vista, go to your Programs and Features and then uninstall a program. You'll find Adobe Reader listed there. Take it out, install the Foxit Reader, You'll never miss Adobe ever. Becky writes that she's using Windows 98 and has AVG 7.5, and she's having trouble sending out emails since she's been doing some recent updates. 7.5 is going by the wayside. They're continuing to update it because people are slow to get on board with 8.0, but the new version of AVG will not work with Windows 98, Becky. Your best bet, I think, in your case is to uninstall the AVG and install what's called a VAST antivirus, A-V-A-S-T, and I think you're going to have better luck with it and be able to send and receive your email. Another AVG question. AVG 8 has had a few rough corners. I've, I have to admit, I like the product because it has anti-spyware, but it is a little bit rough. Dave says that ever since he installed AVG, he's been having some problems with Firefox. The problem probably is the toolbar that gets installed if you don't uncheck the box when you install AVG. AVG tries to put in this little toolbar that scans your searches to guarantee that you're going to, or at least to help guarantee you're going to a safe site. So my recommendation, Dave, is uninstall AVG, go back to my site, watch the video, and use some of the techniques in the video as well as the, uh, what I have in the text of the, vi of the uh, article. And do not install the toolbar, do not install the link scanner, and then you should have much better luck with your Firefox. Bob's using Windows Millennium Edition and has another AVG question. He wanted to take it off and use a VAST since Windows... Uh, since AVG 8 will not work on Windows Millennium, but he's having problems uninstalling AVG. And he said that the company told him to install the newest version. Don't do that. Go back and find the 7.5 installation file. I think it's still at download.com if you search for AVG. And reinstall AVG 7.5 and then uninstall it, and then you should be okay. <laughs> I have to laugh at these kind of folks. I get tons of email, and unfortunately, email has become a far, far back burner issue for me. I, I do the best I can to answer as many as I can, Baz, um, but I cannot guarantee I'm going to answer every single question. So yours did come up this time. Where can you find online simple HTML beginner lessons? What I would do is start by searching 
for online simple HTML questions or lessons and you will find that. HTML means hypertext markup language for those of you out there that not sure what that is and in order to learn that you have to learn all these different tags and things like that and to tell you the truth HTML is a good knowledge to have Baz but there's so many tools out there now that are available that you don't even need to know a lick of HTML to be able to build a nice website uh, and web designers are gonna get mad at me for saying that but you really don't have to know it but I would just go to Google search for online HTML beginner lessons and you will find a lot of different sites to help you. Ruben is using Ubuntu and wants to use Wi-Fi radar in order to try to get his Wi-Fi running on his computer but the, the link that I had achieveubuntu.com doesn't work anymore so I just did a real quick search and I found that it is now at wifi-radar.imager.org and then you'll get, be able to get back and see Wi-Fi radar for Ubuntu. I have some bad news for Sandra. Sandra has been a long time WordPerfect user and she just bought a new computer with Windows Vista and wants to use WordPerfect 12 and unfortunately Sandra WordPerfect says that they are not going to support I believe 12 is where the cutoff is and less. Anything under Word, WordPerfect 12 and under is not going to be supported by Corel for Windows Vista. You have to buy a newer version of Corel WordPerfect in order to continue to use that on the Vista platform. JT writes that he has a, window, a Dell 8250 using Windows XP but his Microsoft updates won't install and his AVG is taking over three hours to scan a lot of objects. Number one, run the run the disk cleanup. Either run the disk cleanup part of Windows XP or go to my website helpmerick.com and download the cleanup program. We have two of them actually. They are cleanup and one called C Cleaner. And if you download those from the links and resources section of my website first, then try running your scan. The scan should substantially reduce. The time should reduce. And maybe that will also open up your Windows updates. There might be something else going on with spyware or something on the Windows updates as well. So do some other scans to make sure that there's nothing else sitting on your system causing problems. But doing the disk cleanup alone may help you out. Stephen writes that he was watching the video on how to install RAM on my website and then he went to crucial.com to do a scan to see what kind of RAM he had and what he could add and his computer blue screened and had to restart. Windows Vista does have some issues with the Crucial scan. There actually is a link when you go to crucial.com that tells you if you have Windows Vista do these certain things and there's probably some kind of security error or something that happened on your Vista that caused that shouldn't cause any permanent damage Crucial is a good company and their scanner works really well so I'd go back and try it again and watch for special instructions for Windows Vista users and uh, you should be in good shape. Shirley is using AOL and says they've recently added a pop-up feature pop-up search bar feature that she doesn't like she expressed her displeasure to them and she wanted to know is there a way to remove the pop-up there is surely but it's not a good answer you're gonna like stop using AOL at least for you AOL users that want to use AOL don't use the AOL browser or the, yeah don't use the AOL browser and don't use the AOL software just go to AOL.com in Firefox or Internet Explorer and use their online website they're trying to shift people that way anyway but their software is so old and antiquated and proprietary you're gonna have problems after problem after problem and continue to see these kinds of things happen give it up surely AOL is old news and you're gonna to continue to have problems if you continue to try to work with it we're gonna end up with this Firefox question from Pat Pat says if I import my favorites from Internet Explorer to Firefox will they still be in Internet Explorer yes they won't be synchronized if you add one in Firefox it won't synchronize it with Internet Explorer but they'll be in both places if you do use both browsers and you want to keep the fi the favorites and the bookmarks in sync go to the tools and add-ons in Mozilla Firefox and search for bookmark synchronizer and you're gonna find various tools that will help you do that but other than that you will not lose them in Internet Explorer so we'll call that good for today's episode of Rick Answers His Email. I'll be back again soon to answer even more of your email.